Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're getting a little chefy. You know what I mean? A little creative, a little, little good for your food. Blackened fish and shrimp with a cream sauce. And it's gonna be poured over like a griddled jalapeno and cheddar cheese grit cake. Ooh, ooh, ooh. stay tuned. All right, guys, I gotta tell you a quick story. All right, so look, here, let's start from here first. All right, so all this is the cast iron pan. I've got my uh, my uh, flat top preheated and I'm just reducing uh, some of this uh, seafood stock. It's just flavor. All we are is building the building the building block. What is it called? Base, base, base of flavor. Base of flavor, so that's what we're doing. So the cast iron's hot, my flat top's hot, and all we're doing is condensing this down. How much is in there? A cup. A cup. It's going to be condensed down very, very good. We only want a couple tablespoons. We're going to add some cream, some butter, some blackened seasoning, and this is going to be the base of our cream sauce. So we're going to show you guys this video right here. If you guys look up there, boom. Actually, it might be right here. Right here. Or right, like there. right here. All right here. All right, guys, here's a list of ingredients of my soon to be world famous grits. We got some heavy cream some good yellow grits. I did some seafood stock, some cheese, butter, and jalapenos. Now, all you do is just measure out per package instructions. And this is just a very like a slow process. Cook it slow, allow the moisture to reduce, the grits are going to absorb it. You guys can see like what I'm showing you now, this bad boy is creamy. That's because of the butter, of the butter, of the butter. Look at that. Mm, good Lord of mercy. All right. So all I did is take Pam, I just sprayed like a little Pyrex dish. You could really use a bunch of different options right here. Um, and then after that, I folded in some uh, cheese and just diced jalapenos. Um, I've allowed it to cool just a little bit because I want to keep the specks of cheese in the grits. And then after this, I just poured it in that Pyrex dish. I put some plastic wrap over it, and here we go. All right, so now that you guys have seen that, these are good cakes, so we let them cool overnight. I've already tasted one. They're they are phenomenal. phenomenal, and I do not like grits, oh, but I will eat hey, a whole had, pan when of you that. that cream and butter. It just it does something to it. But if you guys notice, let's watch another video of my southern fried catfish. We're going to use the same breading for these bad boys right here because I like the idea of matching it. So basically, what we're going to do is fry these refrigerated. Um, grit cakes and then the exterior gets really crispy but the inside gets really creamy and stuff and then you pour that cream sauce over top of it mm. and that blackened fish you guys know we're on something good today hey let's get back to that story real no quick. you didn't tell them what so these you made yesterday yeah this is the grits you made yesterday I did. you covered it in plastic wrap yep and you refrigerated it overnight i did you did not say that so i'm saying that Thank you for being there for me. Uh -huh. I wanted to get to the story so bad I couldn't stand it. So let me tell you this story. I'm about 10, 12 years old. The culinary idea is just going back and like I'm really just started getting started. So my dad's raising me. I'm at my dad's house and he wants to do a blackened fish. I have no idea. It's probably catfish. So as you can imagine, 25 years ago, I'm giving my age away. 25 years ago, YouTube wasn't around. Cell phones wasn't around internet wasn't around so all you had to do was basically package instructions you can't say anything because you've done one just as bad so <laughs> we get this blackened seasoning little helicopter or plane going around i don't know if you guys can hear that so we get this uh blackened seasoning it says preheat your cast iron on high for 10 minutes so my dad's like all right we'll do that so my dad gets a cast iron pan handed down from his family gets it ripping hot on the stove for 10 minutes Oil your fish, add your seasoning, add to the add to the cast iron pan. So I'm in the kitchen helping dad. I'm super excited because it's one of those new things that we haven't had. And dad gets that butter and puts it on like on that fish. I can't remember what kind of fish it was. Puts it on that fish and he lays that thing in that skillet. <laughs> there was so much damn smoke in the house. That he, he dropped what he was doing. He was scared to death. He thought the cast iron pan had exploded. 
We opened up all the windows. He couldn't even get the pan off the stove because the smoke was so bad. We're standing this far away. We couldn't see each other. He tells me to stop, drop, and roll because he thinks everything's on fire. I can't breathe. I'm crying. If you guys would have had a Google image, I guarantee we opened like the windows in the house, the whole house. I mean, the whole house was white. So we opened the windows and I and we all escaped, or me and my dad escaped. My grandmother was with us at the time and we escaped the, the backside of the house. <laughs> and if you looked outside of the house, it looked like the windows were smoking. That's what it looked like. Like the smoke was just pouring out of the house from one piece of fish being preheated way too long on a cast iron skillet. Point being, great story. I'll never forget it. Dad, I love you. All right, here we go. Let's get our season. You guys can use, I, I got this stuff. I don't know. There's a bunch of them out there. I really don't think it matters. Just use whatever blackened seasoning. It says, what does it say? Blackened redfish magic. Yep, by Paul Purdue. Are we having redfish? I'm having salmon. salmon. You're having? Red snapper. Okay. And shrimp. Now, obviously, you guys know that we're landlocked. We've talked about this before with some of our videos. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to this right now so that's time to steep while there's moisture in the pan. About a good tablespoon. You see all that reduction happening right now? All this is is just chicken stock. I don't, I mean, not seafood, seafood stock. stock. I don't have any stock on hand or I would have used it. I think we used it last time. I can't remember why we used it. Oh, the shrimp and corn chowder. All right, so the point is we're landlocked. We don't get a lot of fresh fish, so we're kind of, uh, you know, struggling on what kind of fish to buy. So, even the fish is not necessarily important. It's the technique that we're about to show you guys and the flavor concept. And you guys can add the fish that you want, whether it be like a white bass, crappie, walleye, grouper. It doesn't matter. Catfish. It doesn't matter. Halibut, flounder. And go on and on. All right, let's go. We're going to season this pretty liberally on the sear side. Okay. Not too much on the skin because my wife won't eat the skin. Nope. We know Nellie will. Here's some red, uh, the red snapper. I'm gonna tell you, we almost got grouper, but that gum, they want to sell grouper for what, 34, 36 99 a pound? Yeah. You almost had to have a successful YouTube channel for that. <laughs> 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 All right, just a little shrimp. Kind of showing you guys the versatility of this uh, flat top grill. Be able to put a cast iron skillet on there. You can cook on it like that. I almost debated to take the top off and cook everything without even the flat top on there, but we ain't gonna do that. I did get some G. 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 I saw the G. <laughs> because it does have That's a higher. That's East Tennessee and G. Yeah, G. <laughs> it does have a higher content of. Um, oh, let's wait a minute. It does have a higher content, a uh, higher, uh, what do you call it? Smoke point. Here's these grit cakes real quick. We're gonna start these grit cakes and move those over when they're done. Y'all see that? The specks of cheese and jalapenos in there. Now all we're going to do is just dredge them. No flour. I don't want a huge. I don't want a huge crust, but it does protect it. And this is that same batter that we use to fry our fish in. I love how you're using our SpaghettiO bowl. <laughs> My mom's SpaghettiO bowl from like 20 years ago. <laughs> That's the bowl you picked. Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> this bowl, I don't know how long we've had this bowl, but the kids like it. We stole it from my mom. <laughs> so just get all the sides. You know what this does? It just adds like this. It, it's all about texture. It's all about flavor. And this really does help the, uh, the flavor profile for the grits. It adds that crispiness when everything's being so soft and stuff. I'm going to bread a couple of these up. I feel hungry today, so I'm going to do two of them. I'll but take you two, like too. Yeah, they, you liked it. Dang, it was good. Yeah. You know. And this is one thing that's uh, so versatile. We There's this restaurant we used to eat at that um, had the greatest ribeyes. But uh, as a side item, I would get uh, cheese grits with marinara. I know it sounds weird. It but, was uh, so man, good. you could do like some really good homemade meatballs. Mm. And instead of making grit cakes, keep the grits loose right out of the pot. Mmm. We're going to have to do that. Mm-hmm. All right, we got four of these breaded up really nicely. Let's bring them right here. You guys see this? How much it's reduced? We got just a little bit more. I'm going to add about, I don't know, about a good tablespoon of butter. 
let that melt. And then we we'll close to adding our cream. Mm. God, if you guys could just smell that. Mm. I'm a big fan of stock. So anytime you can add flavor and get away with it, I'm on board. All right, let's get that G. G. Yeah. <laughs> G. All right, here we go. Like I said, it's got a higher smoke point. Our flat top, I should say, is on high. I want to get that crust. I'm going to offset it just a little bit with a little avocado oil. And here we go. Put a little pressure down for even crustness, I guess you should say. And since my whole deck goes this way, it's like <laughs> the oil. We're looking good. Let's see right here. Butter's melted. All in that flavor, all in that seafood stock. Mmm. All right, here we go. Let's add some cream. How much cream are we adding? Let's see how much we get in there. I'll say about half a cup. We're add a little bit more of that seasoning. Not a bunch because they're seafood this season, but I just want to accent accent the flavor. What's it called? Accentuate. Yeah, that one. God, Lord, I would never come up with that one. <laughs> now we're going to let this start reducing. Mm, we're on to something good, guys. On to something good. You just got a new YouTube subscriber. <laughs> did I really? You did. I just saw the notification. Yep. That's all right. So I won't call out your name. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what happens is I, I think it's a really great way to add texture, flavor, and something that's just definitely different without going the extra mile. If you're going to make grits, you might have leftovers. It's a great way to use leftovers. I despise leftovers. I don't like them. But I love taking leftovers and taking them completely different. What do you mean? Two of my probably most popular things that I do is uh, beef pot roast, whether we smoke it or we put it in our uh, Dutch oven, whatever. After the beef pot roast is done, I always make enough to where the next day or a couple days later, we make beef vegetable soup out of it. Mm. Absolutely love it. And the other thing is spaghetti. I love making spaghetti and then having the leftovers and then making like a spaghetti style lasagna because you never have enough noodle to meat ratio, but if you add some ricotta, some mozzarella, some egg, Next thing you know, you almost got like a lasagna and you can build it to where it's enough for me and the char the uh, microwave queen. I'm going to start calling you the charcoal, charcoal queen. queen. We ain't there yet. <laughs> no. No, you ain't heard your... I don't think I'm the queen of anything yeah. in the kitchen. Microwave. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you should see that thing that I did on Instagram. We are making tacos, something just as simple as ground beef, taco seasoning, and shells. And I'll season one of my cast iron skillets. And so that smell inside the house, I thought was the smell that I was smelling. <laughs> I had them bad boy taco shells in there forever. In, the, I mean, in forever. the toaster oven. In the toaster oven. And they were black as ace of spades. All right, here we go. You guys see how much looser it's getting? That's because all that warmth is coming up there and it's loosening up those grits. Let's see what we got underneath. God, Bobby, it's almost like I do this for... <laughs> 11. All right, let's get the bad cornmeal out. Now let's start all over so we got a little fresh. Pile. Here we go. Let's see. Ooh, yeah. All right, guys, I'm just going to let these cook. I'm going to clean up just a little bit because our heavy cream, as you guys can see, is getting a, a little bit faster than what I'd like. Although it's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and pull it just for a second just so I can slow it down. All right, guys, we're back. All right, so I just cleaned up a little bit, got everything ready, tasted my dang cream sauce, and it is freaking fantastic it's almost like the base of a alfredo because the garlic and the cream and the butter plus we added that seafood stock we're on something right there all right we're just gonna remember this side's cool i probably didn't say that this side's on high because i want that high heat 
and this side's just completely off. So all we're gonna do to keep it warm is just to move these over, okay? Let's clean off our flat top just right here because I don't want that cornmeal mixture on the uh, fish. Go ahead and turn this eye off because this is all the heat we're gonna need right there. All right, let's get ready. Now, typically when you blacken fish, you're gonna oil your fish first and then season it. I have done it both ways. I really don't see the difference, especially if you're outside. If you're inside, I, I, I still don't even see the difference, but. So, a little G. G. Just see if you're on your toes, honey. Oh, I am. If it comes to correcting you, I'm always on my toes. You on know that. Toes, no truth. <laughs> All right, here we go. Presentation side down, because you're gonna keep it on there the longest. And we're not about to overcook our fish. This beautiful red fish. Move our shrimp over here. God, smells good, I can tell you that. Now when these shrimp are done, I'm gonna throw them in that cream sauce and uh, see if we can't just take that cream sauce from here there one more level of goodness we're close <sighs> i might not be from new Orleans. oh let me do a shout out terry buddy i hope this serves you right you know your tigers won yesterday beating them gators ah go tigers but uh he's a good commenter he's a good follower i appreciate his uh his uh go back and forth with me all right let's get a uh let's get a side shot side shot yes yeah. You guys see, it's a good way to tell when you're cooking any type of seafood, fit or chicken Ooh, or something like that. it's splattering on me. Yeah. You guys see how it's starting to cook from the sides up? That's a good way to tell without having to worry about overcooking your fish. So, remember, shrimp doesn't take long. Ooh, look at that color. Look at that, look at that crunch on the outside for that blackened seasoning. Mmm, that's gonna be good in that cream sauce. Yep. And I didn't want to overdo the seasoning on the shrimp, although you could have added more because I knew the fish were going to be blackened. So if you blacken the fish, the shrimp, and the cream sauce, I didn't I didn't want it to overpower it. Oh, yeah. So this side is still off? I've it's only got one burner on. This is residual heat carried over, and these two have been off the whole time. And you can still see it's hot enough. Even with these two on high, it's hot enough that we're still actually cooking our cakes. All right. This small one is probably close to being, let's see what we got here. Let's add just a hair more oil. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. See that? That's beautiful. That black crust on there. All right. Cast iron's cold enough to touch. Cream has thickened up some because it's got off the heat. Add those beautiful cooked shrimp in there. Slide that over. Mm, golly. Get some of that seasoning to mix around in those flavors. What we got here. This actually is a pretty quick meal. Oh yeah. Yeah, I could have done a lot of it at the same time. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm sure you can't hear it, but that crispy crispiness is exact is exactly what you're looking for when you blacken your fish. It's not overcooked. It doesn't give a new meaning to the word blackened. Sometimes, man, you get blackened fish and holy smoke. It's black. It's black. <laughs> I ain't about that. All right. Well, let's get these grit cakes. A little fancied up in here. Mm. 
you can do this too. Look at this cornmeal crust. That's why I decided to, to use that cornmeal crust instead of panko or flour or something like that because obviously the yellow grits, it's just one of those things where it's like you're incorporating flavor of flavor, like the right flavors together. I don't know if you guys, just, I don't know if you can even see the jiggle. Let's just, let's just take a little bite of one. Golly. Let's just take a little bite. <laughs> nah, you're killing me. <laughs> All right, this is done. We're gonna move this from the heat. Let's taste it just one more time. God, that garlic and that shrimp. Just a hair. We like our salmon about medium rare. We got really good salmon this time. Beautiful, beautiful redfish. Snapper, not redfish, snapper. <laughs> Look at that salmon. Mmm. Mm. Oh, you get salmon and snapper, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm on a diet. <laughs> Protein. All right. Let's do what we came here to do. Let's wow them. You ready? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. All that garlic, butter, heavy cream, all over those jalapeno cheddar cheese grit cakes. Take these big, beautiful shrimp. Mm. Plump and juicy, got that blackened crust on them. It's like a seafood trio. Mm. The good thing is, man, I'm telling you, you can add any seafood you want to this and you're not gonna be. Mm. There's so much flavor that the fish basically is there just to catch the, the flavor. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Just a little bit more, cause I'm gonna tell you what, those grit cakes. All right. Last touch for color. That's just a casual Sunday lunch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Had a little hot sauce, something like that. There you go, folks. Hey, any type of fish, any type of seasoning, and it's more about the technique than it is that. And after, just let the flavors just do its thing. We gotta try it. What do you mean? You're not signing off. We gotta try it. Now it's time for the bite. Okay. Oh, same pork. Spoon. God. <laughs> uh, uh. What are we gonna do first? The grit cake. I can't get over the grit cake, how good it is. It is good. I don't know if you guys can see how fluffy it is. Let's see. How creamy, look at that. How creamy it gets while it's warmed mm. up. Oh, give me a bite. Give me a bite. It was super good, just plain. God, that's a game changer. When you made a little bit last night. Is that fish or is that, I don't know if that's. Mm. That's a game changer. That's one of the ones that was gonna wet your mm. whistle. Some of this beautiful salmon. Mm. Mm. You get that. Mm. Where's the where's the spoon? <laughs> Those grits. I'm telling you. Er. A okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound that notification button. Comment below if you guys want me to make something on the flat top. Oh, that's the whole point. Somebody, oh, I don't know. You gotta hurry up. I'm ready. Somebody to eat. said, "Hey, make this on the flat top," and I was like, "Deal." So you know I'm doing it. Somebody commented and they said it, and I said I'm gonna do it. It's been like a week. So if you guys want me to make something, we need let ideas. Me know. That's right. Peace.